decades ago, there was a cattle rancher in South Dakota named Claude Barr, but it was the work with plants where he earned international acclaim. His story was out of print for many years, but last year it was republished. A revised edition edited by our next guest. Jim Locklear is the Director of Conservation at Lauritsen Gardens. Mm -hmm. Nice to have you here, Jim. It's Welcome great to be back. here. Thank you very much. So let's start with uh, your role at uh, Lauritsen Gardens. What do you do? Well, I'm kind of the science guy mm -hmm. at the garden. So my program is a little bit below the, the radar screen. We work with uh, rare plants and plant conservation issues. and. Mm -hmm and just helping people understand the, the biology of plants a little bit better. Mm -hmm. A lot of research then? Yeah. 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 Um, this, this story, um, I mean, this isn't the only thing you've written, right? I was kind of, I was studying up on you, right. Mr. Locklear. <laughs> uh, you, you've written a couple of things, but what was it about Claude Barr and about bringing this back to the people that was important to you? Well, this book, Jewels of the Plains, was published in 1983, mm -hmm. and it won immediate acclaim as one of the great books in in horticulture and botany, just the plant world. Um, and it was written by this rancher um, from South Dakota mm -hmm. who spent a good part of his life, he had a mail order native plant nursery and shipped plants all over the world from this tiny little community of Smithwick, South Dakota. Uh, the book had been out of print for years and, and uh, it just, there's a lot of folks, myself included, just felt like it should be back for a new generation of readers and plant lovers. So we worked with the University of Minnesota Press to revise some of the things that were out of date in terms of the plant names mm -hmm. and just get it back out again. Why was that, why is that so important? Well, um, Claude was a very unique individual. He, he lived on this ranch uh, in a really remote area of South Dakota, not too far from Shadron, Nebraska. Yeah. And he grew these plants himself, studied them, knew them personally, yeah. and he, his writing is so, has such beautiful detail. But then he was also a very gifted writer, so mm -hmm. it reads almost like a nature essay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's good information, but it's beautifully presented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was something about him, too, that he was a rancher, but then also um, knew so much about plants and conservation. I mean, he was almost bringing worlds together that a lot of people were skeptical that it was even possible to do what he was doing with his life. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. He, he wrote at a time when people thought of the Great Plains as just the great American desert. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today we think of it maybe as flyover country, or at least some folks do, but, but he brought to light the, the, the wealth of wildflowers of this part of the world to, to the world. And so he was really unique from that standpoint. He was like an ambassador for the, the wildflowers of the Great Plains. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And this book, it really, how do you tie this back into the work that you do at Lords and Gardens? Well, you know, we're about plants, kind of like a zoo is about animals. We're about plants and helping people understand and appreciate plants better. Mm -hmm. And so this is just one aspect of telling the story of plants mm -hmm. and helping people appreciate the wonder and beauty and value of plants. What is happening this winter? Because if we look outside, Jim, yeah. it's awfully gray, yeah. kind of gross, <laughs> right. but not at Loritz and Gardens. What do you have? Well, of course, we have the conservatory, mm -hmm. this big glass structure, 17,000 square feet under glass, just opened a year ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a wonderful place on a day like this to be. It's about 80 degrees, and bananas are growing, and orchids, wow. and palms, oh, and bananas. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We have uh, we have several plants, uh, banana trees that are producing bananas right oh, now. So, so it'll transport you to another world. Uh, that's indoors, but actually visiting the garden in the wintertime, there, there's a lot of benefit to that too. It's it's a beautiful place, quiet. The beauty's more subtle. Uh, I love being out in the garden in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, it makes you feel like it's not winter time. That's right. For one thing, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have any plans for other stories? I mean, if you think about writing, not just doing research, but writing, what's next on your radar? Um, I've got a little article about a group of plants called Phlox that's coming out uh -huh. in Nebraska mm -hmm. Land Magazine and, and some things like, some other projects like that in the works. But um, yeah. No books just yet? Uh, nothing, nothing formal. Come on, Jim. <laughs> okay, back to Oh, work. there's some ideas. But, <laughs> but I'm this sure. one right here, this uh, is available. Yes. Uh, we have it in our gift shop, uh, gift shop. University of Minnesota Press, Amazon. You, know, you can get it through all those. Oh, so, so neat. Um, and your role in reviving this important story of Claude Barr online. It's loritzengardens.org and of course 100th and Bank 100 Bancroft Street if you'd like to go and see what's happening indoors or out right. this January. Make it feel like spring again down at Loritz <laughs> and Gardens. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, thanks uh, for stopping by. Thank My you. pleasure. Thank you. Well,